Okay, in this tutorial, we are in Tuscany, once again, photographing in an old abandoned hotel. And in here, there are some interesting ceilings up above me. And we're gonna to look to photograph them and then we're gonna edit those in post-processing just as before. Ceilings are sometimes quite difficult to photograph. There's uneven lighting. You might need to do some sort of things in post-production to pull the best out of the ceiling and to even up the light, this kind of stuff. So we're gonna be looking at those and uh, we're gonna crack straight on, let's do it. For those of you who don't know who I am, my name is James Kerwin and this is me. I'm an architecture and interior photographer from the UK and I love shooting abandoned places, relics, ruins, hidden gems and ghost towns, as well as off the beaten path locations all around the world. I'm posting new videos every Sunday, so why don't you join me for the ride by subscribing. You can also check out my website in the description below. Architecture photography has a very big place in fine art photography. It is an area where you can take your time to plan and experiment, as of course they are static structures. Fine art architecture photography is not a simple term to grasp though. First of all it involves mostly images of buildings including both the interiors and exteriors. Also images of facades, windows, columns, staircases and other architectural details and all of those belong to the architecture photography category. Fine art, of course, means presenting an object in a way that focuses primarily or solely on its imaginative aesthetic or intellectual side, the arty side. Ceilings combine both elements perfectly. They are designed, drawn, painted and produced with imagination and when decaying, these sections can also form part of the art. Take my Lebanon book as an example. In here, there's a whole section on Ottoman mansion ceilings, each one unique interesting and somewhat abstract, but also beautiful and of course colourful. However, photographing these was not an easy task at all. There's a skill and one must be incredibly patient. Even here last Sunday in Turkey, I photographed a beautiful ceiling in an Ottoman style mansion. Stick around to the end of this video to see tips on editing this one. When I come to places like this, one of the th highlights and one of the photographic highlights in particular is the ceilings. The problem is, is they're sometimes very difficult to photograph. I'm going to give you some tips and tricks here where we can hopefully look at trying to improve your ceiling photography. I've Googled this, by the way, and there's not many tips online at all. So hopefully the things that I'm going to discuss in the next few minutes are really going to help us in terms of like positioning our camera, our tripod, fine adjustments and of course post-processing. For the purpose of this tutorial what I've decided to do is just use my M50 on the tripod just to show you the, the, the initial tips and tricks so that I can film on my R5 because the light is pretty ghastly. I mean first things first we've got our tripod set up here in the middle of the room and what we want to make sure we're doing is we want to make sure we're positioning this thing in the middle of the room first of all. Now a lot of people get very hooked up extremely hooked up really on looking at the back of the LCD, trying to reposition themselves, getting themselves moved. You know, you're in position here and you're looking at that LCD and, you, and all you're doing is you're just you're looking at your LCD to try to position yourself. But it's way easier if you just actually just stop, slow down, look at the room, position your tripod and then start fine adjustments in the LCD. Much, much easier to do. Camera's on the tripod ready to go. The only thing I've done is I've put the camera, mounted it on the geared head backwards so that my geared head can now rotate 90 degrees and put the camera faced upwards. That's the only difference I've done. The best thing again is not to look at the camera, not to look at the flip out screen, I'll pop it out. It's not the best thing to do because if we get hooked up on this, 
then we're not going to be taking advantage of what we've got around us. And it's about stopping, slowing down, and checking what's around you. What is around us? Well, the first things that are around us are the lines in the actual room. So we can actually check through the center of the ceiling. We could check if we're in the middle. And first thing first is the middle of the room is about here. And, and we are some distance off the middle of the room. Now our camera, if we look at it, is now more in the center. Then we need to check this alignment. Same thing again, we've got a line in the middle of the room. Are we in the middle? We pretty much are. Now we've really cheat coded our way to getting most things kind of correct in camera. What we now need to be able to do is look at the camera and if we then line everything up and if I zoom back out on here now, uh, if I actually put it back to photo mode and zoom out, I should see, and I do, that my camera is pretty much bang smack in the middle already and I've, I've barely touched it. Any movement we do now is all going to be fine-tuned and it's not going to be you know, massive uh, adjustments, which is what we want to try and avoid. I've just lined this up and I'm going to pop this on the screen so you guys can check it. That's my initial alignment straight out of the camera. Okay, so here we are in camera and I've basically lined up everything. You can kind of see that here, trying not to get my head in the shot. I've used the grid lines to basically position myself in such a way that basically we can position all the grid lines so we're nice and straight. At 15 mil, it's very difficult to line things up. One trick I have got is you can actually zoom on in and when you zoom on in on a frame, you can normally check against the sides to check that you're straight. And, and you can see here, I'm still a little bit out, so I can actually just fine tune my composition, pull it back out, go back in, go back out, and you should see that it's a bit of an improvement. It's difficult, of course, when I'm trying to do this in a video mode as well, um, but you get the idea. Everything looks pretty straight. I would say if we were going to nip this into 15 mil or so, you would actually have a better advantage of being able to keep things mostly straight. So I'm, I could go, 16, 17 mils, that's 17. If we do 15, I think it should work out, but it is a little bit bent. You can see that on the bottom of the frame, the ceiling overall is a little bit bent. We could try and have a go at trying to straighten it out in post-processing. So, of course, I'm a bit cropped as well, being in video mode, uh, and that's the thing that I've got to bear in mind. So, yeah, we're pretty much there or thereabouts. If I zoom on in again, double check, come out, that's absolutely fine. I pretty much can shoot that. Okay, so I'm at the bottom of the stairs now and there's a beautiful ceiling up above here. There's a lot of rubbish on the floor. There's even giant holes here, so I need to be a little bit careful. So I've positioned my camera here. I'm gonna show you in camera what it is and uh, how we're gonna photograph it. In camera here. This is the ceiling actually on the, oh, there's a bird flies across. This is the ceiling actually on uh, the staircase, the top of the stairs. And it's much more difficult to photograph because obviously you've got lots of elements in the way. However, when we photograph this particular scene, I do prefer it. Um, obviously, I'm, I'm cropped in, in, in video mode. I do prefer it at like 35 millimeter where you get all that detail of the roof uh, and the ceiling and it looks really, really nice. That's what you've got there. Um, and I'm pretty sure that that is going to look really nice edited up, the colors and the, the tones and stuff. So I'm going to go for photographing this particular one. We'll try and edit this one. It doesn't need as much straightening. It's more about positioning of the camera and getting things right here in the field. Uh, but that's pretty much me. Look, that's where I am, straight. Go zooming in, we can see we're pretty straight on that. I'm gonna photograph it here and give us a little bit of wiggle room in post so that we can just narrow it down. And that's where I'm gonna photograph it pretty much there. Lined up nice and straight.
Okay, so let's jump into Lightroom and you can see an image here that I photographed of a ceiling just last weekend in an Ottoman style mansion in Turkey. And um, what I'm trying to do here to start with, this is straight out of camera pretty much, is I'm trying to bring up the exposure and bring out some of those details. So I'm using contrast here, I'm trying to bring down the highlights, I'm trying to boost the shadows a little bit. I'm also trying to dehaze it because there was a little bit of a softer window on the left hand side. I'm just going to keep playing around with this to try and get the best overall sort of basis to start the edit from. And with me, it's always like a three part editing process. There's the, the blends, getting it together, then there's the basics, and then there's the advanced stuff. Now you can see that I'm using a graduated filter, actually just like one from the left side. And the aim here is now is I could either do it one of two ways. I could either bring up the shadows on the right hand side of this image, or in this case, I'm darkening the left hand side. So using the filter, pulling it all the way to halfway across the image, and then just darkening that side down and balancing it out with the other side. It makes the light look a bit more natural, it makes it look like you're photographing the ceiling and uh, can really make it pop. I'm then using the crop tool of course to try and position my crop overall and to balance out the, the overall kind of finished article. Here I'm just using the layers. Uh, I've used this in a video before. You can actually use the uh, crop tool to cycle through compositional techniques for your crop to check that they're all working. And then finally, I'm just doing some finishing touches before I'd go ahead now, pull this into Photoshop and do my style and my editing and further post-processing on this works. For me, taking artistic architecture photos is a captivating journey. And at the start, I often do not know how it's gonna end. You know, the shoot. There's always an excitement in it. The starting point for me as a photographer is always the subject. And I move from geometries to lines towards emotion and meaning. And a ceiling photograph captured perfectly evokes all of these emotions. And once thought about and composed, combined and edited, they certainly fall into the category of fine art architectural photographs. Okay, so I hope you've enjoyed that video. Uh, I've pulled together all of it from different various sources. It was actually due to be shot for a different project. So that means it was quite difficult to edit in post. There's a lot of footage overshot uh, and I needed to go through a lot of stuff to be able to pull the series together here for YouTube. Um, however, I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, we're going to be going on to some other topics for a few weeks. We're still going to be posting regularly, of course, uh, and I've got some more stuff shot for you. However, I will return to this series at some point in the not too distant future just to talk about gear uh, that I took with me on Italy. And that includes the geared head that I've had some questions about in the comments. Until then, like I said, subscribe, hit the bell notification. You'll be alerted next time we upload a video next Sunday. Until then, Goodbye for now. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Take care, guys.